Here's another one of those outside resources that I was told I could count on. There are no more dedicated personalities in the alumni galaxy than the young lady that I am about to you, introduce you to. When the call calls goes out for volunteers, attendance at college events, or financial support for a project, there is no question about the expected positive response that will come forward. With all of that, she still finds time each year to chair the alumni induction ceremony for new graduates of the college. Miss, may I introduce you to Miss Vanita Aziz, a distinguished graduate of the German Largest College. Speaking for all those 80s, Mrs. East. Two minutes. I don't have a watch on. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. To Dr. Simmons and Dr. Marion Stanton, who to me really personify the legacies of Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth, I say thank you and congratulations. To the Sojourner Douglas College Board of Directors, the administration, faculty, students, and alumni, I also say thank you and congratulations. I'm grateful to be honored this evening, and I appreciate this opportunity to speak on behalf of the decades of the 80s. There's so much I remember about that time because it was a great period of significant accomplishments, great events, and a lot of changes. I'm not gonna go through all of them because some of them already stole it. But what I remember clearly, and I don't know how many of you were there that beautiful day. It was crisp and, and blue and, and wonderful. And I, like so many people in the world, watched as the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. 74 seconds after it lifted off from Cape Canaveral. I'll never forget that. I think the whole world was in shock. I do remember Ronald Reagan, and I remember that he was elected both in 81 and 84, and he started the war on drugs, a war that's still going on. Technology advanced exponentially, and that was the time when people first started having computers in their own homes. I know, because we had one. I couldn't lift it, but we had one. It was a time that science advanced significantly. That was the decade when they found a hole in the ozone layer. That was also a time when they started using DNA for criminal activities. Politically, that was a decade when the first woman, Sandra Day O'Connor, was appointed to the Supreme Court. You know, the decade of the 80s was often called the Me Generation. During that time, the American Council on Education indicated that college freshmen were more interested in status, money, power, than in the previous 15 years they studied. And business management was the most popular college major. At the same time, and maybe as a causal effect, families continued to change drastically. There were more divorces and more single parent households than ever before across all ethnicities. According to the data from American Culture History Archives in 1980, 48.7% of African American families were headed by single mothers. By 1990, it had gotten to 58%. You know, despite those numbers, more women than ever at that time earned college and advanced degrees. The 80s was a period when the market for higher education was fertile and ready. When the former Homestead Montebello Center of Antioch University, then Sojourner Douglas College, graduated its first class in 1981 from Sojourner Douglas College. The motto for the college at that time was the college whose time has come. It was an institution that opened its arms wide to welcome and to embrace the traditionally bypassed adult learner 
of which I was one. I definitely fit that profile. I was a divorced, 30-something mother of two who needed a college degree in order to further her career. I don't recall whether there were a lot of TV commercials back then for Sojourner Douglas College, but word spread quickly and widely about the school by the old way, the griot way, by mouth. That's how I heard about Sojourner Douglas College. It was a time that I made a big decision in my life, and it was the best decision I ever made for myself. I was actively involved at that time in Pan-African movement activities. I and my children, who were six and nine at that time, there they are, they're over there. Stand up, Janaki, Ativa, stand up, my little children. <laughs> they were with me when we marched on Washington for Pan-African uh, Liberation Day. You know, I took key Swahili and I participated in African naming ceremonies. That's where Nini comes from. And I wasn't alone in that persuasion. And it was well received by Sojourner Douglas College. I had the memorable privilege of being in the educational seminar class. And I believe Dr. Simmons, that was the name of that class at that time. And it was taught by our own Dr. Simmons, Dr. Charles Simmons. It was an awesome experience. To be in the classroom when the instructor taught with what I call passionate purpose, it was infectious. No wonder I got involved in everything. I wanted to conquer the world. That's when we gave birth to the Ife Tayo celebration. Now the Ife Tayo celebration or Ife Tayo means love brings happiness. It celebrated agape that was throughout the school in the 80s. Now it was the agape love between brothers and sisters. And it was genuine and it flourished. No matter how much we disagreed, it flourished. I still remember Dr. Richard Gamble, my English instructor, who seemed to make me eat my commas. And Dr. McCoy, who gave us the assignment of writing our own obituary. That assignment changed my perspective on life. There were many committed, compassionate, and caring instructors, administrators, staff, and fellow students who I continue to be grateful to today. And then there was that something extra. Dr. Simmons, Dr. Stanton, maybe the moon was in the seventh house and Jupiter was aligned with Mars. I'm sure peace was guiding the planets and love was definitely steering the stars. I'm not, not sure that that was the age of Aquarius, but I did get a great husband out of the deal. <laughs> Indeed, the 80s were good to me. 